Hi guys, so as you can see, I'm not sitting at my normal desk, I'm sitting at a new desk. Uh, I'll have a little chat with you about that in a minute. Uh, the main reason for that is because I'm going to show you the, uh, the 3D printer that I, I'm currently using. Uh, I've been using 3D printers for the last couple of years and I've been fortunate enough that Anycubic have sent me ooh, about three or four of these different types. Uh, obviously this is a resin one, this is my preferred one. They have sent me the FDM ones. Um, which they're all right, but I do prefer the resin ones as obviously the quality is a lot better and they're a lot faster. But anyway, we're not going to go into the differences between the two different ones, but we're going to have a little chat about the, uh, this one that I'm currently using, which is the Anycubic Photon Mono X2. Um, lovely printer, nice big build plate. We'll talk about that in a bit as well. Um, so yeah, this is just kind of like a general overview of what to expect when you sort of purchase your first 3D printer. Um, so I've had I've been using it for the last couple of years and they are just awesome. Um, it's like having a toy shop in your own sort of living room. In fact, you can go online, you can search for things, uh, download them, whether they're free or you pay for them, but generally whatever you pay is a lot less than what you'd pay with Games Workshop or any other sort of company you're going to purchase stuff from. Um, and then yeah, sort of a couple of hours later, uh, maybe between two and six hours, depending on the size or whatever it is you're, uh, you're printing, and yeah, you've got it there and then in your room and ready to paint and all the rest of it. So yes, yeah, so, so this is the one I'm, I'm currently using. So one thing I will say guys, obviously that these aren't really like little, uh, little noob series. And the reason for that is I'm, well, I still class myself as a noob in everything I do. I'm definitely one of these people that's a, um, a jack of all trades and master of none. So you'll definitely, if you watch a few of my videos, you'll know that I don't know any technical terms of anything. Um, and I basically say things how I think they are. So yeah, you'll you'll get the uh, sort of the easier dumbed down version of whatever it is I'm doing, whether it's going through a printer like this, or whether or I'm sort of showing a different sort of painting technique that I've sort of stumbled across. So there's been a really series of a noob's guide to well, and then whatever it is I'm doing, I'm going to show you sort of how I do it. Uh, whether or not it's the right way or the wrong way, it's going to be sort of my way. <laughs> uh, it's always good to see what people do and how they do it and you can take from it what you want, whether it's the good bits, the bad bits or, or whatever really. So before I go through what you do when you first get one of these sort of bad boys, the good old 3D printer, uh, I've got a little chat about the desk. It was kindly sent to me um, and obviously my main desk where I sit at, well basically it's full of paints. Um, it's a cutting mat, loads of paints around, not a lot of room to obviously show items. Uh, generally when I'm sitting at my desk all you see is my hands because well that's all I can really sort of fit into the shop because there really isn't a lot of room over there. So that's why it's great having this new table um, because I can sit here and show you larger items and finished items and all the rest of it. So back to this table. This table was sent to me by Flexispot and there's a link in the description guys so go and check them out. And it's certainly a lovely sturdy looking desk and there's only a few bits to assemble which is really really nice. So one of the key features about this table for me is the fact that it's one of these rising ones. So it can go up and obviously it can go down which is great because you can get it to whatever height you need for well sitting, standing or whatever um, and yeah it's just awesome. So as you can see this table really does go rather high. Uh, admittedly, I'm only five foot seven. I've not got shoes on, so yeah, I'm not obviously <laughs> the tallest person going. Uh, but yeah, this comes up to my chest, which is awesome. Because um, if you are one of these people who are pretty tall and obviously you want to stand up for a little bit and do some work, whether it's making, printing, drawing, work, whatever it is, uh, yeah, this thing certainly can get to whatever height you kind of require, which is awesome. Uh, but obviously for my main use, I will be having this lower because I probably will be sitting at this more than anything. Uh, especially when using it to obviously print things. This is a bit too high for me printing things. But that's obviously the great thing about this is the fact what goes up <laughs> really does come down. So when you do get one of these out of the box, obviously I've had this for a while now. So I no longer have the box, so I can't even recreate that. Uh, we get these out of the box, they really are that simple. Within 10 minutes, you can be up and away and printing because there's no real bits to put together. Um, there's only a couple of bits here that are obviously separate when they come in the box. 
One is obviously the tray that you put the, uh, the resin in, which obviously goes on there. There are a couple of screws, but I won't put them in just yet. There's one thing we need to do before we attach that. And that's to level the build plate. Uh, this is obviously the build plate. So this is the thing I like about the, uh, the Mono X2 is the fact that this build plate is quite large. Uh, there's a whole variety, I mean, I don't look too big, but they do get some that are almost three quarters the size of this, or if not smaller. So before we put the, the, the vat on that contains the resin, obviously this bit goes on. Uh, there's a nice little locking nut at the top. When you get this, these Allen keys or the Allen bolts should be loose. If not, you just sort of loosen them off. And then, so it all come with instructions when you do get one of these. Very simple, so if I can do it <laughs> really quickly, then anyone can, which, say, which is why these little, uh, little noob guides are gonna be pretty cool because, yeah, they are gonna be taught to you by someone who doesn't know the technical jargon, will say it nice and easy. So what you do, obviously, you, now we can plug it in, and then turn it on. I say this will come with instructions, but it is as simple as just pushing a few buttons. And the thing we're trying to do here is to level the plate. And then it's a case of just hitting the home. And then the plate comes down. So you can use any bit of paper, but it does normally come with one of these little sheets. Uh, as obviously this sort of represents the, uh, the FEP that's in the, the resin vat thingy. And in this case, we're waiting for that to come down. And I say, obviously, it'll do its little bit. This is why this is how quick these things are to sort of set up. And once it's done that, it is then a case of going round, putting your hand on the plate, and then just tightening up all these keys. And then once it's all tightened up, just press set Z to zero. And there we go. And that's it leveled. Uh, so what we can do now is to move the build plate out of the way. Because now we want to get the uh, the resin vat in, which obviously, I mean, I'm calling this a resin vat. I think it's a resin vat, um, I guess. Again, technical terms isn't something that I kind of like generally very good at. Obviously, one of the main reasons for that is memory like a sieve. So like with a lot of things, I know how to do things. Uh, but yeah, when it comes to actually knowing what the things are called, maybe not so much. So yeah, the vat goes in. So you've got a couple of obviously little, uh, little bolts here. And yeah, just in case of making sure it's all nice and tight. So that's tight, that's tight, everything's tight. Um, so when you do get these, you do get a little pair of clips. Um, I think so far I've got a pair of clips of all of them. But these are, they, they look really cheap, but these are what I've been using for, well, for ages. So I've got about six pairs of these sort of sitting in drawers. Um, and obviously using these for cutting out uh, the sprues. You also get a nice little scraper, uh, which is pretty handy. The other thing you don't obviously get is the resin. So this is something you have to go out and obviously get to yourself. Uh, varies in prices, obviously a whole variety of colors. Um, I prefer normally going for a gray, just because well, it kind of shows up better in all the videos. So this has had a good old shake, because obviously you wanna make sure it's all mixed in, especially obviously when they first send them to you, because they might have been sitting on the shelf for a while. And yeah, once it's um, given a good old shake, is as a case of pouring it in. This is where, if you want to wear gloves, obviously wear gloves. I'm not expecting to spill this on myself. <laughs> Depending on how clumsy you may or may not be, you may want to wear gloves. But for this bit, you don't really need to because, as I say, you're not really going to be spilling this on you. And because this hasn't been used or opened before, there's no sort of spillages around the edge. Um, if there is, obviously you want to keep, keep it nice and clean and sort of get rid of that. So yeah, we can now just pour this in. And there's a marker level in the tray that tells us uh, obviously the maximum sort of height you want to put this in. Um, so obviously, because this is a big build plate, it's got a big tray, and yeah, it can accommodate quite a lot of resin in one go. And there we go. And make sure the lid's back on. And yeah, we are good to uh, do our first print. So we put the lid back on. And then we obviously go to our computer, get our file. And my favorite place to go looking for miniatures is my mini factory. Um, yeah, so I recently came across this Kobold troll. 
which I think just looks awesome. Um, yes, I love the look of this. Plus, there's another reason why I picked this chap, and that's because I recently got myself an airbrush. Um, and yeah, I'll be doing a video soon of me unboxing, trying out an airbrush for the first time. So keep an eye out for that. So as you can see, this one was made by a 3D model maker called Duncan Shadow. Uh, again, link in the description to this one, guys. Go check them out. And then it's simply a case of downloading the file, and then you bring it in to the software that comes with the 3D printers. And in this case, it's the Anycubic Photon Workshop. Uh, so as you can see, it fits on the other uh, plate really nice. Um, you could get obviously loads of miniatures printed at once, uh, especially considering this miniature is a reasonable size. The software really is easy to use, uh, but like anything, if you don't know what you're doing, look on YouTube, because someone's done it, someone's made a video of it, um, and yeah. So you've got a few little options down the side, obviously moving it, spinning it around, and this is one of my favourite ones, and that's the size. As I've mentioned in quite a few of my videos, it is so nice to get a miniature and, well, a bit of print it out exactly the size you need, uh, which is pretty awesome. So yeah, you can shrink things, make things bigger. Uh, obviously with this software you can also take bits away you can hollow things out although this uh, this little figure is already hollowed out and you can add supports and stuff but again as you can see this figure is fully supported so i must admit when i do look for, for miniatures where possible i do prefer to get them already pre-supported as well they know what they're doing better than i do so here is where you get the option of messing about with the settings um, I'd have to admit, I've never really changed any settings. I've always gone with the standard settings that come with the printers. And yeah, I've never had any sort of mistakes, flaws, or anything go wrong. Uh, but obviously you can change things here. It's like I've watched several other people with uh, 3D printers, unboxing, showing all the rest of it, and they always print off a little test what's it. I've never at once printed off one of those test thingies. I've literally just brought in what I've wanted, uh, sent the file off, printed it off and yeah no issues so obviously you click on the uh, the slice button there and this basically breaks it down into well all the layers and as you can see you can scroll through here and you can see every little layer it's going to print out one at a time and you can see there that it is hollow so yeah it'll save that onto a usb take that over to your printer uh obviously slot it in well generally on the side or on the front and then yeah just push a couple of buttons really it's, it really is that simple so press print, press the file that you want to print, um, and then, yeah, push the button, and away it goes. So, obviously, I've speeded up some footage here, guys. Um, I am hoping, or possibly looking at getting the, sort of, the right leads you need, so I can do some rather nice-looking time lapses. Um, but obviously, at the moment, I don't have the lead. So what you're seeing is, obviously, the footage just speeded up uh, like crazy, as obviously this thing does not go up and down this fast. Uh, if it did, well, it wouldn't last too long, it would certainly break. But uh, yeah, so fingers crossed, I will get the lead and get some nice time lapses, as it is pretty amazing how these things work. Uh, obviously, they are simple, but very, very effective, and yeah, I just love my 3D printers, and so I've been using them for a couple of years now, and it's just amazing to be able to print out exactly what you want, when you want, and to the size you want, which is just awesome. So this print took about four hours in total, but this is where having a big build plate is awesome because you could just put loads of miniatures on here and obviously it only takes as long as it takes to print the highest one. So you could have loads of miniatures in four hours. But obviously for this little test, I'm just doing the one. And then it's this case of scraping them off and they come off really, really easy. As you can see, I am wearing gloves for this bit as obviously this thing is just, well, it's still coated in resin. Uh, that's obviously why it needs to go in one of these little cure and wash sort of things that I have got. Uh, unfortunately, mine's kind of under a cupboard, so it's a bit difficult sort of showing you any decent footage of that. But it's now been through uh, its wash and cure, so it is safe to touch. Uh, sometimes I take supports off in between the cure and wash, uh, but for this one, I just basically put it in, did both things at once. So the supports, again, this is where having things pre-supported by someone who knows what they're doing is awesome. These are coming off really easy. Um, this is where generally you would probably take these off after the curing because you put them in some warm water, it softens them up. Uh, but as you can see, these aren't soft at all. They are very, well, they're crispy and crunchy, but um, yeah, they do come off nice and easy. I say, cause these have been put on by someone who knows what they're doing. Even though the, um, the software that you get with the printers 
does include obviously been out of put on supports sometimes it goes nuts and puts on far too many and sometimes it hardly puts any on um so yeah it's a bit hit and miss doing the uh, supports in the software so all the bits came off say so they were a bit crunchy so yeah i would recommend normally putting it in some warm water um it just softens them up and they just come off but uh, yeah they come off easy enough and yeah we are left with one lovely looking miniature this is where it's obviously worth checking the miniature just to see if there are any supports that are left especially sort of things in their mouth um, or if you need to you could get the old scalpel and do a little bit of cleaning up but say this one's come out pretty good and yeah i can't wait to have a go at airbrushing this dude in another video and there we go guys it really is that easy to uh, to get your first 3d printer get it out of the box get it set up and yeah start printing um yeah it's just amazing obviously you can turn some liquid out of a bottle of this into well your favorite sort of miniatures uh yeah within hours which is uh, which is pretty awesome so don't forget guys there's links in the description to the anycubic uh, photon mono x2 uh, they have just sent me another new printer which i'll be showing very soon um, I'm not even sure if it's sort of got a release date yet, but uh, looking forward to trying that one out. And also, don't forget to check out Flexi Spot. Um, and a big thank you to them, to them for sending me the uh, well, the table that I'm now going to be sitting at um, and showing off other bits and pieces, which is pretty cool. Also, a big thank you and shout out to all my lovely patrons as well as Chaos Cards for helping sort of support the channel. Uh, there are links down below, and you can get a discount on Chaos Cards when you spend thirty pound or more on their miniatures. Um, yeah, another video on the screen guys, give that a click, see more of what I do. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, share, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.